there, you uh, upset. But like it was already said, I doubt y'all uh, uh, have as upset as I am. Come on now. Here. Speak. So if I'm not over here wilding out, if I'm not over here blowing up stuff, Come on. if I'm not over here messing up my community, Come on. then what are y'all doing? Jackie, what are y'all doing? Y'all doing nothing. Because that's not going to bring my brother back at all. It may feel good for the moment, just like when you drink. But when it come down, you're going wonder, you to wonder what you did. Let's do this another way. Y'all right. Let's do this another way. Let's stop thinking that our voice don't matter. That's right. And vote. There you go. Not just vote for the president, vote for the preliminaries, vote for everybody. Educate yourself. Educate yourself. Don't wait for. Hey, what's going on, fam? So y'all just seen that video of George Floyd's brother with butter biscuit crumbs all on his mouth and all over his mask talking about, why y'all doing this? We all ain't doing nothing. Go vote. And fam, first of all, we know how these families get down. Those of us who understand white supremacy and those of us who listen to people like myself and other people in the new black media, we know that these families are, are getting checks cut for them for the deaths of their children. We also know that if this goes back to slavery, black people being willing to sell or give away their children in order to avoid white supremacy coming down on them. Um, they'll put their children up for sale or up for sacrifice. A lot of times these white supremacists, um, on, even on the slave plantations, when they wanted to molest black children, the parents would voluntarily allow their children to be molested by the slave masters and the white supremacists. Because they didn't want to suffer the consequences of attempting to stop the slave master and the white supremacists from um, practicing pedophilia on their black children. So there's a history of this. You see, white supremacy and its resource deprivation um, creates a very deranged, amoral black person. A black person who in this modern day is willing to sell their child's justice. Yes, no black people aren't out here selling their children's. Well, some are, but. Uh, most of us aren't out here selling our children into prostitution or anything like that in modern days. But what we are willing to do is once the white supremacist takes out one of our children, once they eliminate one of our children and, and remove them from the planet Earth, instead of um, standing up for justice, we will assist white supremacy in creating another victim, another version of our kid. In exchange for a check. What do I mean? Botham John's family. Instead of. Pursuing justice and demanding the utmost punishment. For Amber Geiger. And not showing mercy. And not showing forgiveness. Because we don't get shown forgiveness. A lot of times. That's why we're. Ju that's the justification for us being murdered. Is that we did something wrong. And we didn't deserve mercy. We deserved murder. That's what they told us over and over and over and over and over again about Trayvon Martin, about Botham John. They said he had weed, so he deserved no mercy for smoking weed. Yet when it comes to white people, we got to have all the mercy and grace and understanding in the world because that's that's propaganda. That's how they maintain white supremacy. And again, with the Botham John example, instead of pushing for punishment and not putting in any mercy talk because we don't get the mercy talk as black people. You went out of your way to forgive and hug and say how much she should be forgiven. That way the white supremacists will have an excuse to give her the lightest possible sentence. That's part of what that is about. Because when you see the family get out here and say, I forgives, I forgives, I forgives, I forgives. Then it sounds like it was just a misunderstanding between two people that can just easily be forgiven. No. That's part of their propaganda. 
and they pay these families to get out there and say that kind of stuff because they want to promote docility in black people. The same docility that's not shown to us. That's why Trayvon Martin is justified in being murdered. That's why Mike Brown is justified in being murdered. We're not allowed to be shown any docility. But of course, they it's a psychological thing to, to encourage black people and for them to think. And, cause, and again, a lot of black people are influenced by what's on TV. And they will intentionally put people on TV who are all about forgiveness. And they will intentionally not put on TV people who are not about forgiveness. That's another reason why you should know or know that when you're seeing certain Negroes that's always being given TV and camera time and national audience time, the white supremacists select who they allow on TV and who they don't. There's a reason why you only see the forgivers and the kissers and the huggers on TV. You don't ever see the people that says burn this shit down on TV. The white supremacists make sure that that happens. That's not a coincidence. The white supremacists ensure that only a certain kind of black person is allowed on TV and is allowed to spread their message across the nation. Fam, we have to understand whatever the white supremacists are telling us to do, we should do the opposite. Because they tell us to be peaceful. Why? Because that doesn't disrupt anything. It's like Colin Kaepernick said, when peaceful protests lead to death, revolt is the only solution. I I may not be exactly quoting him, but you know what I, you know what he said. When peaceful protests gives us the same results, Colin Kaepernick himself, speaking of him, he peacefully protested and he got moved out the paint and everybody distracted and deflected about how it's about the military and how we love the flag and a lot of these cops who were so outraged with Colin Kaepernick and so offended by Colin Kaepernick. I remember the Miami Police Department was threatening Colin Kaepernick because he wore a Castro t-shirt. All these people who were so offended by the kneeling all of a sudden want to take a knee. I showed y'all that picture of that photo op with all those cops taking a knee. I promise you, half those white men in that photo, if not 90% of those white men in that photo, when Colin Kaepernick was originally, originally kneeling, they had a problem with it. But now all of a sudden they want to kneel too. Because they know that the peaceful protests are starting to come to an end. And that peaceful babble is starting to come to an end. And it's in in white supremacy's interest for there to be peaceful protests. We've been peacefully protesting since the 1950s. Yet we're still having Emmett Till's happening right now. Ahmaud Arbery is a modern day Emmett Till. Nothing changes. Yes, the system of white supremacy refined itself to give an outside appearance of more equality. But when you look, cut it down to the brass tacks, when you look at housing, when you look at employment, when you look at the George Floyds and the Ahmaud Arbery's, when you look at mass incarceration. You see that nothing has changed. And in many ways, it's gotten worse since the 50s and the 60s. Black people's economic positioning in America has gotten worse since integration. So all of this, and you will notice if you watch the news, any news program you watch, you will notice that they go out of their way to promote peaceful protests. They tell you how effective and oh, peaceful protest has just been so effective. If peaceful protest was so effective, George Floyd would have never got killed. You tell you keep telling me that it's so effective because not only did we do the peaceful protest during the 60s, we do peaceful protest now during 90 percent of these killings. All black people do is peacefully protest. The only other time we really had a riot was when Freddie Gray died. And that wasn't across the nation. That was just in Ferguson. We have peaceful protests. We have peaceful protests about Trayvon Martin. We have peaceful protests about Eric Garner. We have peaceful protests about Sandra Bland. This is a game. It's a trick bag. Black people, I'm begging you. 
If you really want to stop the system of white supremacy, stop listening to these races. There's a reason why they put Keisha Bottoms up there. And I'm telling you, I saw so many white people praising her left and right. And that's intentional. There's a reason why they went out of their way to praise her for denouncing the riots. There's a reason why George Floyd's brother got up there and denounced the riots. Because the white supremacists are telling them to say that. And the reason why the white supremacists are telling them to say that is because that's what they, that's how they want black people to react. Because they know that that reaction is going to maintain white supremacy. Whereas when you riot and you burn and you cause others outside of the black community to experience suffering, that disrupts white supremacy. And then they come with this lie and this propaganda that you're burning down your own community when we don't own anything in our own communities. That's part of the problem of white supremacy and racism. We don't own anything in our communities. And fam, I just want y'all to know, and that's the reason why I had that screen cap up on the screen with the celebrities doing vote or die. Now, we know P. Diddy was the head of that, and now he's switching it up. But there's a reason why they had that campaign out there. There's a reason why there were a bunch of celebrities who were all controlled by the system of white supremacy, or at least 99% of them are, that were telling you to vote or die. There's a reason why George Floyd's brother told you instead of rioting, go vote. There's a reason why Keisha Bottoms told you instead of rioting, go vote. There's a reason why they all want you to, instead of riot, go vote. And it's not because they want the best for you, because let's look, for example, I said it in my last video. You can look at it. The the A fly that Keisha Bottoms told. That's the title of the video. Keisha Bottoms said that black people need to go out and vote when black people are already the highest voting population in the state of Georgia and in the city of Atlanta. We already outvote white people, Asians, Hispanics, and anyone else. Now, of course, we don't have the numbers to numerically outvote them. But percentage-wise, as a percentage of our population, black people outvote every other race already, long before George Floyd happened. So this lie and this propaganda, when we already outvote everybody else, That we need to somehow vote even more? It's a nothing burger. It's a way to keep this continuing. Do you mean that black people, um, you know, all of a sudden stopped voting for the last five years? Or the last eight years? When all these police brutality cases have been going on since Trayvon Martin? Is that why they happened? Because we stopped voting and we stopped engaging in the process? That's propaganda. Even Keisha Bottoms herself. That's how your black ass got in office, Keisha. Because black people voted for you. What are you talking about? Go out and vote. And the fact that you would even say that as a solution when black people, when the stats, the stats, the facts show that black people are already voting. Shows that that's a propaganda move. And fam, I know I always mention the down ballot strategy, but that's why I was so against the down ballot strategy, because all it's doing is telling black people to continue to vote the exact same way you've been voting in the past based on who you personally like. And always the person that you're personally like is a Democrat. That's why they say go vote Democrat down ballot. Because we already do that normally and we can't vote for the Republicans because they worse than the Democrats, which is a, I've already discussed that in several videos. That's propaganda. So again, fam, that's why I have a, a, an extremely high distrust for the A Dunce movement. That's why I call it the A Dunce movement. Because for you to sit up here and have all that data, yet you don't understand white supremacy enough to know that Democrat down ballot is a very dangerous and very irresponsible thing to say to black people. Especially when we already don't have the discretion to not just vote for Democrats blindly, yet you're telling us that we should Even further, right after you get done exposing how the Democrats have allowed us to be in a position where we will have zero wealth by 2053, you still tell black people to go back and do the same thing that they've been doing minus the the president. That's the only thing you told them to do differently is not vote for the president. Yet for the rest of it, no, you're not going down the ballot looking for a black agenda. You're going down the ballot looking for who you like and who you don't like. 
You're looking for the ballot initiatives that have nothing to do with a black agenda. And again, in Georgia, the state that Yvette Carnell resides in, black people already outvote every other race. Yet we were in a position, Yvette Carnell, where you needed to start the ADOS movement because we are on the bottom. So clearly voting is not the solution. You, If you're going to vote, you have to get a black agenda in exchange. But even outside the ADUNS movement, I'm just saying that, that how that shows how much, how co-opted and how dangerous the ADUNS movement is for promoting such a dangerous strategy. Instead of telling black people that you should not be blindly voting for Democrats, you should have the sense to vote for who who uh, represents your interests. And if neither side represents your interests, then don't vote or vote third party. But again, back to the mainstream cast, back to the Keisha Bottoms and the and George Floyd's brother. Fam, the reason why they're telling you to go out and vote instead is because that is what they want. That is what the system of white supremacy wants because they know it's a nothing burger. Right now, you're damaging and disrupting the system of white supremacy, or at least you were, because I know a lot of the protests are starting to wind down at this point, or a lot of the riots are. But you were disrupting the system of white supremacy. That's why they wanted it to stop. That's why they want you to go back to voting, so that nothing will happen. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give props to a, a brother um, who comments on my channel, Gator Gator. He made a comment and he said it best. He really um, summed up the point that I'm trying to get across in this video. So let me hurry up and find his, his comment. So Gator Gator. And again, this is the brother Gator Gator. Props to him. I'm reading his comment because it's a, it's a good summary of this whole video. So, uh... He says Morpheus and he commented on my the eighth fly Keisha Bottoms told in a three minute time span. He says Morpheus, the black mayor of ATL said the solution is voting, not violent violence, something we've done since the 60s and we still have nothing. So we got to keep in mind what's the real issue behind all this white support. Like suddenly they really care about this black man and black people. Yeah, right. Some of the support could be real. And the rest of it could simply be a vote Trump out of office blueprint. Then once that's accomplished, you N-words are back on your own. So stop calling my phone. Fam, that comment is sums it up. That's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to misdirect our energy. Go vote. Go vote. As a matter of fact, let me say one other thing, fam. George Floyd's brother, he said, go vote for the preliminaries. Fam, what's the preliminary? There's a primary in voting and you vote in the primary for a candidate. You don't vote for the preliminaries. This brother don't even know the proper terms for voting. Yet they told him, yet he got out here and is telling you to go vote like he's some civically educated dude. He don't even know the right word to use. He called a primary a preliminary and he said vote for the preliminaries, not vote in. Is Are the preliminaries a political party? You vote for the Democrats. You vote for the Republicans. You don't vote for a primary. You vote in a primary. And he and again, he didn't even say the word primary. He said preliminaries. That's uh, Preliminaries is what you do before a basketball tournament. Or a football wrestling tournament. That's a preliminary. What is he talking about? And again, fam, I know he just doesn't know the right words, but again, that shows that that's not his own words. That was, he was instructed to say that. George Floyd's brother was instructed to say that in exchange for the check. And again, fam, I gave the Botham John family example. I'll give the George Floyd family's example. Instead of standing up and saying that we're going to do, we're going to tell black people to burn it down because we want to stop the next George Floyd. No, instead what they say to themselves is, I don't care about what happens to another black person's family member. Now that my family member is dead, I need to collect the check. And the white supremacists want me to go out here and do the bidding of white supremacy and tell black people to peacefully protest so that I can get my check from white supremacy. Because that's their main concern is getting their check because black... And again, a lot of black people, they do this because they've been so economically deprived and so resource deprived that they that they do lose their morals 
in order to get some money. But that doesn't make it okay. To sell out the rest of black society so you can get your check for the fact that white supremacy murdered one of your family members. So again, fam, with George Floyd's brother, he don't even know the right words to use. Yet he's telling you to go out there and vote when he don't even know what the correct word for a primary is. He calling it a preliminary. And he's talking about it as if it's a political party. Vote for the preliminaries. Is, is that the third party? Is that like the Green Party, the preliminaries? What are you talking about? How do you vote for the preliminaries? What the, what the hell are you talking about? Again, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just out here trying to collect a check. That's why I said at the beginning of the video, he had butter biscuit crumbs on his mouth. But again, fam, back to the brother Gator Gator and what he said, exactly what's going to happen. For the idiots who listen to Keisha Bottoms and the idiots who listen to George Floyd's brother and the idiots who listen to A Dunce and go vote down ballot, you know what's going to happen after you vote down ballot or after you listen to Keisha Bottoms and go vote some more, even though your, your ass is already voting? You know what's going to happen? Exactly what Brother uh, Gator Gator said. They're going to say, leave me alone and stop calling my phone and ignore your black ass. And another George Floyd is going to happen. Another Ahmaud Arbery is going to happen. Another Tamir Rice is going to happen because you Negroes don't learn your lesson. And that's why I made that video this is why I don't like talking about police brutality. Stop listening to these paid, paid off Negroes, these paid off celebrities, these paid off mayors, these paid off family members of the victims of police brutality. Stop listening to them. They are telling you advice that continues this. We peacefully protest all the time, family, and it has not worked. 90% of our protests are peaceful, yet this keeps happening. Colin Kaepernick's protest was peaceful, yet he still got his career ruined. He's lost millions of dollars for peacefully protesting. Now all of a sudden, the white supremacists love peaceful protests? No, they just prefer it over riots, and that's exactly why we should be rioting. But anyway, fam, um, that's another video. Like, share, subscribe, and peace.